episode number 69 of the Nintendo Jump Podcast. We are a weekly discussion podcast created for Nintendo gamers by Nintendo gamers. It is the week of October 13th. My name is Daryl, and today, as always, I'm joined by my good friend Sergio. How are you, man? Hey, Daryl. It's been, a, like I, I would say, like a bittersweet week. My computer died, oh, no. and I Whoa. had to spend a bunch of time restoring and repairing and doing things. It looks like everything is fine now, which is good. But on the flip side, I got a turntable for vinyl. So, so oh, you got a, a record player. Nice. Yeah. Okay, so real quick, completely off topic, uh, what record is your favorite? Well, I have two. <laughs> <laughs> and If I made you throw away one. <laughs> and the one that's in it right now, it's Ori and the Blind Forest. Oh, wow. Whoa. Okay. Out of curiosity, awesome what's the other one? <laughs> the other one is Perfect Dark. <laughs> oh wow! Dang. Okay, so you got a record player specifically for video game soundtracks. You're you're fun. Yes. This is awesome. <laughs> I did not expect that. That's pretty good. I recommend the Undertale soundtrack. Um. Mm. Also, this week joining both of us, you've heard him. You love him. It's our friend Kevin. How you doing, man? Hell yeah! <laughs> doing pretty well, actually. Although yesterday wasn't that great, my allergies went haywire. Yeah, but today <laughs> it's haywire. <laughs> haywire. <laughs> but uh, today is a lot better. Uh, you know, as expected, I do have uh, my kombucha right right here. Uh, it's by oh, shameless plug. Shout out to Camilla Grove. Excuse me, Camilla Grove with two L's. Uh, All right. So are it, they paying you? <laughs> no, they're not paying me. Um, Maybe, hopefully, maybe someday, but we'll see. But yeah, I'm having their green pure fermented tea kombucha uh, tw- in 12 fluid ounces, you know, or th- 355 milliliters. Uh, it contains live cultures or cultures. I don't know how you say that, but you know the word. And Oh, oh my yeah. God, I really do hope they're paying you, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean... I, I mean, I'm just going to transition from that to, you know, I am drinking a beverage myself. Uh, it's okay. actually, it's actually Nestle Pure Life water. It's the best water you can buy. Nestle, thank you for uh, sponsoring us. I'm kidding. <laughs> Nestle did not sponsor. <laughs> well, you know what I got I, before we jump into things right quick. How are you doing, Daryl? I'm okay. Uh, I, man, I, I, I'm still just kind of enjoying playing games and it's been, Kind of a fun time the past few weeks, so yeah, I'm, I'm doing all right. Uh, I'm, but I'm, I'm absolutely ready for this week's podcast. And with yeah. that in mind, Kevin, what is this week's podcast about? Well, we're gonna do, but on the spot. Pop it's actually happening. It's actually happening. It's <laughs> the for real. theme song came back. <laughs> <laughs> on the spot, on you, the spot. Pops we you. know you thought you heard that theme song for the past few weeks, but you didn't hear that one. <laughs> you, you, you weren't ready. Uh, also, we're gonna do some listener mail too. So, on the spot part two and listener mail. Uh, but before we do that, we're gonna do a game of the month update with Killer Queen Black. <laughs> and then. After all of that, at the actually at the end of the show, uh, I actually got to sit down over the internet world with Big Shot, uh, who wrote a review mm. piece for our blog, which is uh, NintendoJump.blogspot.com. Uh, he wrote a review for Little Town Hero, which just came out, uh, brand new RPG thing from from Game Freak. Uh, it was actually a, a lot of fun. So he and I just talked about the game. I uh, asked him a bunch of questions about it, and you will hear that at the end of this episode, seamlessly patched in by our local editing expert, who shall remain unnamed. Uh, spoilers <laughs> to that, though. I did learn what Big Shot's last name is. Oh. Ooh. Would you Would you guys like to, to guess? <laughs> is it Shot? No, I'm just kidding. It's not Shot. <laughs> no. No. I know. It's not Shot. That, that would okay. be awesome, though. Um, okay, fine. No. I- Big Shot's last name, okay, is fired. Whoa! It's amazing. <laughs> Big Shot fired. I it's you can't plan that. I don't know. <laughs> no, you can't. I totally came up with that joke all on my own, and Kevin did not help at all. Anyways. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, you know what? 
<laughs> yeah, thanks, Daryl. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, okay. Uh, but let's get into a uh, very, very brief uh, Game of the Month update. So if you have not heard us over the past couple weeks, we have started a Game of the Month series where each month we will focus uh, not every episode, of course, but we'll give us some updates and we'll play as a community one particular game. So the game for October, as we mentioned a minute ago, Killer Queen Black. So yeah. uh, this just kind of worked out as a bunch of people in our community were already uh, pretty excited for it. And turns out a bunch of people in our community ended up getting it uh, to the point that we've had multiple nights since it released with like 10 people online trying to play it all at the same time. So yes. like... Mm -hmm. multiple uh rooms open and like a full room and then somebody will drop and somebody else is like hey you got a spot <laughs> it's it's awesome <laughs> it's uh uh the closest comparison i have is um back when splatoon 2 came out we were doing kind of the same thing and everybody wanted to be in a rotation oh, and, yeah. and play the game mm -hmm. um actually this game kind of reminds me of splatoon but in the feeling of how it's being played uh in particular so you guys actually have both picked it up uh i don't really need to talk too much about it but you know, and and obviously a full review is coming at the end of the month, so we're gonna hold off for a full review. But initial impressions, thoughts, real quick. Uh, right off the bat, I I do like it a lot. I, I think my favorite part so far, and and probably as a mainstay, is the the fact that there's three different ways to win. They're very different, and they really make you you know be alert of what's going on all around the board. So yeah, very fun, addictive, and lots of stuff going on to keep track of i like it yeah i like how everybody has a role especially the queen and for those who do not know the queen is not that easy to use not that easy to play with so um but we do have some tips later on which we will talk about in in the next in that episode where we talk about a review of killer queen black but yeah i mean it's it's fast paced it's brilliant i have so much fun playing with y'all especially from the discord community that we have and i mean it's just all around fun and like man just like working together you know and i i gotta say you know snail and steady wins the race yeah <laughs> i love I that love one those, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. My... so i mean sergio alluded to it. there's three different ways to win you can win any of these ways on any map at any time if you actually fulfill the this um the criteria one is and I'll get it right this time, uh, killing the uh, enemy queen three times. That's pretty straightforward uh, without getting your own queen killed three times, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> uh, another one is to fill all of your open spots in your hive with berries, which are found around the level, and the workers can carry back up to the hive or they can throw them. Um, and the other is for a worker to jump on a snail, that is somewhere in the center of the map and move it all the way back to their goal. Uh, and it moves slow and they're very vulnerable during that time, but you're juggling these three win conditions. And like you said, that is a lot to keep uh, track <laughs> of. So, I mean, we've had a, a bunch of wins where uh, like our team or the other team honestly did not know what was happening. And all of a sudden the game's over and you're like, Oh, because <laughs> yes. you're like you're like zoned in on filling your own berries and you're not even noticing that the snail is is moving that kind of thing um so i asked this on twitter but you guys can chime in too what is your favorite way to win the game man the snail that's my favorite i mean you know as much as i think killing the queen three times is awesome and all and you know the economic victory is it's a very sneaky way. I think the snail way is like, it just has that swagger. Like, oh yeah, I'm gonna, you know, snail is steady <laughs> win the race sort of thing. And it's just nice because then, you know, like, you know it's coming. You know it's coming. The train is coming. And, you know, you have like a warrior, like, <laughs> guarding the snail with the guy or thing. Like, or the, excuse me, the worker, you know, hopefully they have the speed ability and a berry carried and, you know, it's going just trying to cross the finish line and then you have like and all of a sudden oh my god like all the like the opponent workers and the queen are trying to you know stop it but now nah, you got the warrior you got you know different support like workers and stuff i mean it's just i think it's just fun and then like at the same time you try to have to juggle right because you don't want the queen to die right because you it, it's like it's like it's like this 
amazing mayhem of things that I just cannot contain. Like <laughs> this I, was one question, Kevin. <laughs> I know. What was your favorite way to win? You said snail, the, right? It's a snail, but I just I had to get into it. You know, you know for me, All right. I, Sergio. Yeah, what is your favorite way to win? <laughs> <laughs> the snail is very tempting, but I'm actually I think I'm gonna go with economy because I like the mm. fact that you really have to uh, work as a team on that one. You have to pay attention and make sure that at least, ideally, two people are, you know, working on getting the berries to the hype. So, yeah, economy. I think it's like the most surprising of the wins. Oh, it is for mm. sure. Uh, my my personal favorite way is is actually a little bit more specific than this. Um, I like for the team to drive snail, which creates a lot of pressure on the other queen to come and attack the snail to stop it from progressing. And when she does, I like having a soldier or our queen posted right there. So she attacks, we attack, she dies. Uh, so whether it's by snail or military victory, I don't care. Um, but mm-hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna officially vote Team Snail here. And I gotta say, uh, the results of this poll were extremely lopsided, with 86 percent of people saying Team Snail on this one. So oh, nice. Team yeah, Team Snail is the official approved way to win in Killer <laughs> Queen Black. So there mm-hmm. you go. Um, so, I mean, with that, obviously, we're very happy about it. Uh, I posted a Twitter review just saying the game's fantastic. I agree with that. Um, but we'll talk more about it later, and we'll get everybody's opinions on it going forward, uh, pros and cons and everything. So uh, we'll do that later, I think. So for now, for sure. are you guys ready for On the Spot? I am ready for the On the Spot Part 2. Yeah, yeah, different soon. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> Is is that your on the spot question? That was my on the spot question. No. Uh, oh, was it? Oh, I was gonna say. It. So I mean, he answered it. He's obviously ready. So Kevin, ready. hit us with the first question, man. All right. Here's my first question. <laughs> oh my gosh, what's going on? And real okay, quick, so- we're just, this is gonna be like abbreviated rounds, so and we can actually uh, get to some listener mail and then get to the interview uh, interview slash review with Big Shot. So yeah, we'll do a couple rounds of this. All right. Here we go. First question by me. If you were taking a train from point A to point B without any Wi-Fi connection and it was about an eight-hour train ride, which one Nintendo Switch game would you be playing? Mm. Okay. Mm-hmm. First of all, yes. <laughs> regardless of which game I would be playing, I would absolutely be playing on a gray Switch Lite. It's just, <laughs> it's just so beautiful. And I cannot yeah. fathom why you would play on anything else. I... <laughs> yo, yo, I mean, okay, hold up. Let me just, I thought. For, any, I, for anybody this... listening, I would not be playing on a Switch Lite, but I'm trying uh, to convince Kevin that he needs one. So <laughs> just bear with me and play along, please. And, Anyways, and you yeah, know what? Definitely it's not going to work. <laughs> gray, those white buttons, the white sticks, they look so, oh, no, so good. No, I can't. Stop. So good. I can't do it. <laughs> it's, it's not going to happen, guys. Y'all know I've already said this a mul- multiple times. Like it's not gonna happen. Um, I'm I'm very happy with my switch. I don't believe you. Uh, <laughs> so, anyways, I will. I would love to say that I'd be playing some story based game, but there's a lot of like every time I travel, uh, be it through plane. I haven't been on a train in a long time, but uh, anytime I travel on a plane. I don't typically like playing story-based games that much because I can't hear as well. Uh, I'm, I've got to be focused on other things around me and such, so I can't really get into the game. So honestly, the game that I tend to fall back on on plane rides and such for many reasons actually is Mario Kart. Uh, I'll, I'll just jump Ooh, into Mario really? Kart and start do, running time trials, which is interesting because it's not something I normally do in that game. Uh, but I just kind of do it. I'll get into a familiar game, something I already know, something I don't really have to listen intently to and just, you know, just kind of play it and have fun. So yeah, that's for, for that particular instance, I, I think that's just my game. Damn. That's, cool. that's, nice. a, that's a good answer. Yeah. I didn't expect it. Uh, especially with time trials too. I mean, yeah. Sergio. Cool, cool approach. So for me, okay. I'm assuming it has to be a game that it's out now, right? I cannot pick up. Uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield. <laughs> Animal Crossing. <laughs> and, you know, I mean, that would have been a good answer, but yeah. A game that's out right here, right now. I want to before. tour the world without leaving my village. Animal Crossing. <laughs> there you go, man. Well, I'm going to go with Pokemon Let's Go Eevee then. Okay. Ooh. Yeah, because, you know, it's Pokemon. It's good. And I've actually been playing it on my handheld Switch. 
and the catching works a lot better. There's there's very little. Basically, the Pokeball goes to the center no matter what you do, which is ideal and in how it should work. <laughs> so mm. yeah, that that's a good one. You know, you don't need a lot of focus. Um, you can still enjoy the train scenery and catch some Pokemon on the way. I'm going with that one. Very nice. nice. And so when you said your handheld switch, you absolutely mean your gray switch light with the white buttons <laughs> and white sticks. Yes. The, that the, the, the sleek oh, form factor feels no. so good. Yo, okay. Yo, man. Think of I how mean... brand new Joy-Cons feel. The whole system feels like that. It's oh, all... nice. It's a, Just it's rub it against body. your face. <laughs> you take a break. <laughs> oh, you know. Mm. Uh, uh, it, switch light. I mean, okay, I'm going to stop right there. For me, there's only one game that I would love to play on a train ride. It's not an RPG. It's not Mario Kart. Excuse me, Mario Kart. Oh, <laughs> Really? <laughs> <laughs> it's, Who says Mario anyway? I don't know. I don't know how that came up, but okay. Mini Metro. Yeah. I, okay. I love. Fair enough. When it comes, oh. to, tra- when it comes to train rides, I love puzzle strategy, video games, um, like Mini Metro. I bought it on the Steam when I play on the PC, and I have it on the Switch, and I still like to play it. Mini Metro is the game that I would definitely love to have playing on the train ride. You know, it's it's not as stressful well, until you get to the later rounds of, like, one playthrough where, you know, you have all these, me- these, you know, these subways you have to connect and all that and try to go back and forth and make sure all the passengers get to their destinations and all that. Uh, but that is something that I would like to play on a train ride. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm still relaxed. You know, I'm, I'm looking outside the scenery and then same, well, in between many Metro sessions. Um, <laughs> now, there is a new game that they are playing coming out with later on uh, by they as in Dinosaur Polo Club, who shouted them, who made Mini Metro. Uh, they have a game coming out called Mini Motorways. Now, I don't know when it's coming out, but I am very, very much wanting to play it. Um, you know, it looks really good. It, it it adds a bit more to it, you know, with, like, different highways and all that. So, yeah, Mini Motor. That's what I'm going to go for. Nice. Or sorry, Mini Metro. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you like you like it on Switch? I do. I think it's it's the perfect place to play it on the Switch. You know, it's the music is very ambient. It's quiet, um, and you know when you when you play through stages, you know you're playing in London, Paris. I mean, you know, I think Boston at one point. Just all these different cities and towns and stuff. So, um, oh, and New York, like. And, and, you know, the subway system in New York is can be pretty, pretty crazy. So, I mean, just to have that challenge of creating these these subway links back and forth and just just having a ball. And, yeah, not that stressful. Still relax. Uh, but at the same time, perfect place to play. On a train. Between, for eight hours. Hell yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. Okay. Um, that I actually love little games like that, too. So... That 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 would be one that I might pull myself. So yeah, that there you go. Um, Hell Sergio, yeah. you got a question on deck? Yes. So you all know my <laughs> my love for Animal Crossing as a series. And really? Yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what happens when when like people ask me, "What's your favorite game? What's what do you consider to be the best game?" I often don't include Animal Crossing because what happens is that Animal Crossing becomes something else. I Like, honestly, it transcends games to me. It's more than a game. I always say Animal Crossing is an experience. And I was wondering what game or what series does that to you? Something that becomes more than a game. It becomes an experience. It becomes something far bigger than just a regular game. I mean, I mean, we all know it. they're just games, video games. But there's got to be a special game or a series that goes beyond that for you guys. What is it? Well, that's a that's a that's a deep question. <laughs> hmm. A game that is beyond the game. It's an experience. Hmm. Well, I guess for me, I mean, when it comes to something like that, the RPGs, man, they make or break me. 
sometimes breaks me, but usually makes me. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I think one particular experience, I got to say Final Fantasy VIII, man. That's like my, my spiel. I mean, Final Fantasy VIII was that game that really, it was more than just, you know, collecting magic spells left and right from different draw points. And uh, it was basically experiencing this world of different characters and Squall and why is this guy so freaking depressing and sad and all that and I didn't know why but until I you know as you progress through the game and then I think just getting more and more into the lore of like you know parts of the world you know like um like and the one thing about Final Fantasy VIII they do really well is that you know they they showcase you know you in the present and the past with Laguna and his squad um, spoiler alerts. You know, I mean, I know it's a pretty old game, so <laughs> excuse me for that. But yeah, I think you know the whole time thing. Dang it, and... I was almost there. Oh, dang! Yeah, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I I think Final Fantasy VIII is is that kind of experience. Like I was I was so obsessed with Final Fantasy VIII back in the day that you know I got these like awesome like these action figures of Safer Almacy, which is like, you know, one of the antagonists, and Squalling Heart. And boy, I don't know where they are right now. <laughs> I think they're somewhere <laughs> at my family place back home, but I mean, yo, like, that was it for me, man. It was it was the first Final Fantasy I ever played. It was one nice. of the very first introductions to what a role-playing game is for me. What and... does it mean to play a role? <laughs> <laughs> Well, <laughs> shout out to Octopath Traveler trailer. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, and that's also an awesome game that has the NJP seal approval. Anyway, so back to Final Fantasy VIII. You know, it it, it was just a big experience. Um, granted, I did not buy it on the Switch. Excuse me for that, but you know, I played it enough to realize that it is it is ingrained in my memory. This this experience of you know being able to you know relate to characters uh and and going through this journey and and i mean and just the music adds so much to it too like you know fisherman's horizon man come on now like it's yes. one of the best pieces of all time and like something about it makes me feel really good and like f not just nostalgia but also it's like a feel good sort of feeling where you know no matter where you are in life you, know, you got music that can cheer you up and get you back going on top of your on top of the world on your own two feet or three if you have three feet. <laughs> I don't know. But... <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> I don't know. Okay. No, I but, you I... know, it's okay if you didn't buy it on the Switch because we know you're waiting for the Switch Lite, so it's going to be <laughs> even better there. For sure. But I got news for you. The Switch Lite is out, so you can go buy that sweet, sweet, oh. silky smooth gray Switch Lite. Oh, man. White buttons. Yo, it's... Yo, this is running joke's not gonna end. Looking oh my god! Sharp. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and answer the question. <laughs> so go for it. I've got two main answers, probably some more, but uh, two main answers depending on how I want to answer the question, and I think I'm just gonna go with both. Uh, so first one uh, is an actually an experience outside of video games, and that would absolutely be Smash Brothers. Um, so nice. Super Smash Brothers has oh. led, I've talked about it a lot, right? So I don't really need to go too far into it, but it's led me to some of my closest friends. It's led me to, uh, kind of who I am right now. It indirectly led me to marrying, uh, my, my wife. Uh, so yeah, I mean, as far as games that became an experience for me, uh, Smash Brothers is mostly an experience for me. I, I enjoy the game. Don't get me wrong, but, um, yeah, playing it with people, in tournaments and building community and such. Yeah, that's a huge part of my history because of that game. So got to go with that. Um, secondly, mm -hmm. uh, from one game I talk about a ton to another game I talk about a ton, uh, Celeste. Uh, I can't separate the game there from the experience I had when playing the game. So yeah, I got to gotta say um, Celeste for the single player experience and Smash for the community experience. Yeah. Oh, nice. nice. Awesome. No, actually, that's a good point you made. Because then, I mean, you know, with in terms of the community, I mean, we've we've had games like Mario Kart and Splatoon that we play with our community, and it's just been an amazing experience, uh, top to bottom. So, um, it's one that that's our honorable mention. Playing games with our Discord community, that is amazing. For sure. <laughs> the, yeah. 
it it's made certain games just better for me. Like, uh, for example, Killer Queen. There you go. Yes. All right. So I think it's time for my question, actually. Uh, so I'm going to go with, who do you think is the deepest or most interesting Nintendo-owned video game character? Mm. Oh. Most interesting. Damn. This one took me a little bit to uh, to think of even even mine, so I I can go ahead if you guys want to kind of think about it. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I I've thought about it a lot, and there's a bunch of characters that I love. There, there's a bunch of games that I love. Um, but if I'm talking about most interesting character that they've ever made, I think I have to go with Zelda from Breath of the Wild. Uh, and I've I've mentioned this before. But I think that that character goes through a range of emotional complexity that is built on the history of the Zelda series that you don't have to have that experience, but if you do, it just enriches it. Uh, because you've seen past Zeldas just be awesome and be instantly awesome, and you you watch this one be unable to fulfill what she thinks she needs to fulfill for most of the game. And things go really bad and she has to deal with it and you kind of watch it through her. That entire game was built around her for me. Uh, and I mean, for a game entitled the legend of Zelda, yeah, that this is mm. about as close to it, uh, about as close to that title as I've ever <laughs> seen in the series for sure. Um, so yeah, I think, you know, it kind of surprised me because Zelda is usually just kind of a bland character to me. Um, but Breath of the Wild Zelda is that's like next level Nintendo writing, and I was really happy with it. Yeah, I can see that, and especially when you play Breath of the Wild and you uncover these, you know, sort of memories, and then you see glimpses of Zelda going through her her struggles and pains and all that. Like, I, I can see why that would be your choice. Um, it, I mean, man, that's. Kudos to the the game writers who um, wrote that Zelda character in Breath of the Wild. I mean, it's man. Like... And I gotta say, she's a large part of the reason I'm hyped for Breath of the Wild too. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. just flat out. Hopefully, she doesn't just like disappear the whole game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. All right, who else has one? Well, my my answer or my pick doesn't really. It's more about the potential than what they have done in the past. And they have tried something in the past and it went pretty much horribly. And I'm talking about Samus Aran from the Metroid series. <laughs> I, I thought about this too. You're not, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I actually kind of agree with you. You know, because they always portray her in this environment where she's the only one either alive or, or in the planet that she, she, she knows she's there and she's finding out all this horrible things either happen or are about to happen again. You know, she's in danger. There's so many games where there's like an escape sequence. And then, you know, it doesn't it doesn't really... I mean, the, the games have story, but it doesn't have a lot of character development. And when they tried to do that in Metroid Other M, I mean, maybe that was the vision of a certain person. And, you know, they tried, they went with it. You know, I really felt the emotional connection to the baby in that game. I just, you know, <laughs> I know that was a little bit of a subtle story point. So, you know, not everybody may have caught it, but that was actually about her <laughs> affiliation with the baby Metroid. And I, I thought that that was, you know, it was it was underdone, but, um, you know, pretty, pretty well done overall. Yeah, yeah. In... <laughs> <laughs> almost got through it. Almost. <laughs> oh, my God. They hammered that story so much. <laughs> uh, but you're right they they tried and it was actually kind of interesting for them trying yeah yeah and i want them to try again but you know try harder actually <laughs> try actually better. try this time <laughs> 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 and i mean it would work there's many ways where it could work but i feel like with other m you know uh in the history i feel like they might not try again with samus but man i really hope they do and if you think about it also, Metroid has been sort of used in different ways. Uh, that was one of the biggest transitions from 2D to 3D that I can think of. And Absolutely. Even switching developers like Metroid Prime 4 had to go through that. And I mean, I'm really looking forward to the game and I hope it has a lot of stories. So I feel like Samus has a lot of potential and, and I want Nintendo to maybe someday explore that in a, in a better way. Yeah, awesome yeah. answer. 
Well, hopefully they'll uncover more in the next iteration of uh, Metroid Prime. So we'll see yeah. how it goes. Yeah. Yeah, you know what? This was tough for me. Uh, I was choosing between uh, Ness and Link, uh, but I'm going to go with Ness. I think, granted that I, I didn't really know much about Ness until, you know, the first Smash Brothers came out. But, I mean, just like, you know, with, with Earthbound and granted I... Hmm, I've only looked through the game. I didn't. I, I never. I, I I played a little bit. I never really. You know. I haven't finished it. But I mean, I think there's a lot to this character than just you know your your typical like psychic powers and all that. And I think that there's a lot more to him than meets the eye. Um. I hmm. I don't know. I, I I can't really say much on that. But yeah, I think Ness would probably be my most unique or Link. But maybe maybe Link is my better choice because then you know he a lot of the times you know all of his. The, the things he does, it's it's through action, and you know, there's always he goes on these all these journeys, you know, saving Zelda or or even um, just going through the things that you know, like talking to different different people in towns and stuff. I don't know. I'm I I, I don't really know how to. Yeah, my my answer is pretty bad. I don't I I don't really know. This one's <laughs> tough. So. <laughs> well, I mean, if 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 you'll allow me, I can advocate for Ness a little bit. Okay. So. Ness is a character, the main character in an RPG <clears throat> who has mechanics like getting homesick. So he starts missing his attacks because he's homesick and he needs to get to a phone to call his mother because he's a kid traveling the <laughs> world, trying to save the world from this great calamity. Uh, and, and he gets homesick because of course he does. Uh, when he is home, he has a dad. You don't ever see his dad. His dad talks to you over the phone and sends you money, and that is literally it. Uh, his town is kind of awful. Uh, his friends in his town are kind of awful. His dog is kind of awful, actually, and <laughs> runs away at the first chance it gets. Uh, and he goes on his own journey, keeps his, his sense of family as, as much as he has, and goes around, meets these new friends, and eventually goes through all these crazy places that you know could not exist in our world, but uh, just kind of makes sense in his world. And through the you know the the trademark uh, power of friendship, actually ends up saving the world. So I mean, yeah, I can I can make a, a decent story for Ness here. I think he is a very interesting character for uh, for the silent protagonist type. Yo, thanks for saving my answer. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I, I apologize. Like, I, I didn't really know how to elaborate, you know, because, I mean... You were just I, trying to... Th you spent most of that time just trying to think why Captain Falcon is interesting, and you didn't come up with <laughs> <anything>. <laughs> No, you know, because for That's me, like... Sad. <laughs> well, the thing is, for me, it's like, when I think of Captain Falcon, like, I've... Like, granted, the anime and the, the, the one F-Zero game I played, um, there's not really a lot of interesting things about him like other than that you know he's shrouded mystery you know you don't you know like if you watch the anime you know who he is later on in the the, the series like i think it's like f-zero gp legend okay you know who you you real you watch the anime you'll find out who he is but then i don't know just for me it just seemed pretty one-dimensional um it's not he as interesting is, as that's like someone because he is <laughs> Well, yeah, exactly. So that's why I was like, oh. He's extremely one-dimensional. All right. Kevin, yeah. what's your next question, man? Okay. Um, the next question is, what kind of color do you want to see next for official Nintendo Joy-Cons? <laughs> you know what? I've determined that none of us need Joy-Cons anymore. I think <laughs> we all, all just need switch, switch lights. that gray <laughs> Switch Lite oh, with that slightly God. soft... You know, oh, coating on man. it. This is never going to end. Just fits in your end. hand. It doesn't weigh that much. It weighs <laughs> a little bit less than you even expect it would. <laughs> Feels so good, man. Oh, man. Feels so okay. good. Okay, I don't know. So great. <laughs> Just no, it's not gonna the real happen. answer is any kind of double purple. All right, Sergio. Oh, ooh. <laughs> ooh, nice. Uh, well, let me go with two options here. And they would both be sort of limited edition type of... Uh, designs, I want a wood finish, uh, a set of Joy-Con that look like fine wood. Mahogany would be nice, maybe maple. Did you mm. see the cardboard ones that they, uh, d did you see those? They they yeah. gave the Switch away as, as like a prize in a Labo contest? Yeah. Man, I was jealous about that. It looks so <laughs> cool. Uh -huh. Yep, yep, they look awesome. So either that or 
a white set of Joy-Con with vermilion colored buttons. Oh, yo, hey. yo, that's right. That's the Score yo. Bunny Edition Joy-Con. Oh my goodness, that would okay, be. I could dope. totally see that happening. <laughs> vermilion would also be good <laughs> on <the> Switch Lite. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> very true. Oh, you could trade man. in your gray one and get a vermilion one. Uh -huh. Oh man, you know what? Okay. Oh god. All right, uh, Sergio. Next question. Oh wait, I didn't answer mine. I'm sorry. My fault. It would be, it would be a grayish green color, like my car. Um, I I think it would be you know, because I mean we 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 have the neon green. It's it's pretty good. And then I think Best Buy is going to have, well, as I've seen it from my last visit, they're going to have like just solid color green Joy-Cons. Mm -hmm. But I would think a grayish color, grayish green color would be really nice. Um, yeah. You know, yeah, because just... not all the colors have to be like bright, like, hey, look at me, I'm whatever color. Like they have to, <laughs> they can be toned down. <laughs> just a little bit. Just a little bit, yeah. Atomic purple, anyone? Hey. Uh, oh. I, I wouldn't like that. I would too. Uh, yeah. In indigo, the GameCube color. Yep, I would do that. That'd be really good. Nice. Yes. Yeah. All right. Now, All right. actually, <laughs> Sergio, <laughs> your question. Okay. Next question. What is a game that you wish you could relive your first time playing it? And I can answer first to sort of give you an example. You know, my favorite Zelda game is The Legend of Zelda: Ocarina of Time, but I feel like my favorite Zelda play experience was actually twilight princess huh. and you know it, it's different for everyone but for me when i play that game uh, it was my first quarter in college and i only had two courses because some transfers or whatnot basically i had a lot of free time so all i did every day was play twilight princess and i loved it maybe that's why i like the game so much <laughs> <laughs> so so that, that was, like I said, it's not my favorite Zelda. It's 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 up there for sure. But I feel like the way I played it and how engrossing it was, oh, man, I wish I could relive those days. So what game do you wish you could relive? Basically, you have no memory of it. You're starting fresh. Whenever you played it, you're going to relive those years or memories. Okay, so this is as if that game was modern? Mm -hmm. Like, go back to that time? Or is that warp that game to this time that you have no memory of it? Because that actually changes. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. It's more like you go back to that time. Okay. Yes. Ooh, okay. You may not expect this. I may not expect this. <laughs> Wait, what? Po <laughs> Pokemon Blue. I would, yeah. Oh. Pokemon Blue, I would love to, you know, relive again. I, I think, you know, it's, it's interesting because, like, when I first started playing that game, granted, I've only watched maybe five, six episodes of Pokemon before that, and I was already hyped for the game, and and just not knowing, you know, the the other gyms that were going to come. Like, I knew, you know, Brock and Misty, you know, Pewter City Gym and Cerulean City. Um, but I didn't, like, the other six, you know, I was like, man, like, I, I just want to be uh. the best I never was and just, you know, be able to conquer through the gyms and see what's out there in this pocket size video game that I can carry with, you know, the pre, 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 pre switch for a day. And <laughs> it, it's just, there's something about having, you know, like animal like companions or, you know, with you battling and, um, and, and just going on this adventure. And at a time when I wasn't really good with making friends, um, you know, this game really brought me a lot of joy and subsequently did make me, uh, some brand new friends at the time, fourth grade, just bonding over Pokemon and talking about like what what Pokemon you've seen in the Ridian Forest or like in Ladder Town, which has the most eerie piece of music I've ever heard in a long time. And <laughs> yeah, I, I, that's the game. The that subject I would want. of many a creepy pasta. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that would be it. That's my nice. game. Mm -hmm. Nice. I think for me, uh, this is kind of a hard question because I, I do go back and experience games, but if I wanted to like go back and, and see it for the first time again, maybe Super Metroid, mm. which I still to this day think is darn close to a perfect game and one of the better games ever made. So 
Uh, when I first played it as a kid, I I appreciated it. I didn't have the the deep appreciation that I do now, but it, mm. I still really liked it. Um, but yeah, playing that game for the first time again would be a lot of fun. Mm. I still have to play it. <laughs> I have not. Played yes, it you yet. do. I do. Oh, man, you goodness. definitely do. Ah, uh, I. Gosh. You will not look at uh, Metroidvania genre the same. I mean, there are games that you could argue are better than it in the genre. I would not personally, but I'm not going to hold it against people when they say things like Hollow Knight because that's also mm. a great game. Like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to fault people for that. But it changes how you view it when you think of this game was built by uh, 30 people in the 90s. Like, this is ridiculous. Wow. Uh, so, yeah, Super Metroid. Um, cool. All right, this is a fun one, and it, this is a brutal one for myself. <laughs> uh, oh. Of these game series, there's four here. You get to choose. One gets a sequel announced tomorrow. One, the series gets canceled. And the other two stay in limbo for the foreseeable future. You must choose Whoa. between Kid Icarus Uprising. That series, so like a Kid Icarus two or, or you know some new Kid Icarus game, Paper Mario, F Zero, <laughs> and Mega Man Battle Network. Oh man! Okay, so, uh, so the choices are, I mean, not the choices, but like the criteria: which one should get a sequel, which one should stay in limbo, and yeah, two of them stay in limbo. One gets a sequel announced tomorrow, and the other one must be canceled. So you have to choose which one gets a sequel and which one gets canceled. Oh, boy. Uh, man, you know, granted, I did not play Paper Mario, and I did not play Kick I- Icarus Uprising, so I might be a bit biased for this one. Um, oh, yeah, oh boy. pretty much for you, it comes down to two games, and you got to <laughs> determine which one you want to save from the fire. <laughs> now, I would want a sequel for Mega Man Battle Network. Right okay. there, right here. Yeah, really. Yeah. I will. I will. And uh, I would like. <laughs> I would like F Zero and uh, Paper Mario to stay in limbo. And... Oh. oh god! Oh. Don't you do this to me. No, I can't. I'm sorry, Kid Icarus. Ah, uh, no pitchforks, please. <sighs> All right, Sergio. <laughs> well, this isn't gonna get any better. Oh no. <laughs> I would give the sequel to Paper Mario for sure. Easy answer. In in um in Limbo, also easy answer would be Kid Icarus and F Zero because that's how they are right now anyway. Oh no. <laughs> no, not so, Mega Man. Oh, yes, I'm no. sorry. Oh. <laughs> no more battle network. Oh. No more battle network. On anymore. the down turn. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. No. <laughs> it's okay. No, I understand. I I can I can see that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So yeah. this I didn't think of this through when I was asking this question. Oh no. <laughs> Don't say F zero for. Full disclosure: I literally love all four of these series. I like you guys. Don't know this, maybe. But I am the largest F Zero fan on this podcast by far. <laughs> and I mean, like by far. I love F Zero. I love it. Uh, I'm not gonna argue that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have not played the one on GameCube, so I have nothing. Or to the one on 64. Oh, uh, well, well, okay, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, and this is a little bit backwards. The series that gets a sequel is Kid Icarus Uprising. Ooh. Of these four. Okay. Because, and I know this was kind of the oddball on here because uh, this was a one off 3DS game that was a sequel to a game that, from 25 years ago that was completely different. I loved this game. I loved it so much. Uh, it was a fantastic single player game. It was a fantastic multiplayer game developed uh, with a team led by Sakurai. Uh, the multiplayer was fantastic. I would love to see it ported. I would love to see a sequel. Anything, some of the best writing in the in video games, in my opinion. Um, it was all cheesy and uh, voice acted and annoying at times and just hilarious. I loved it. Um, mm-hmm. so Kid Icarus gets a sequel. Oh God. Um, <laughs> here we go. I hate to do this. I really do. No. No. The. <laughs> The series oh, no. that I'm going to cancel 
He's Mega Man Battle. Network. Oh goodness! <laughs> oh man! That really hurts. Oh my! My heart is just that really broken hurts. into five pieces. Not six, not four, but five. <sighs> okay. All, All right, good. fun time. So with that, <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Uh, okay. I, 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 that's understandable. I mean, Battle Network is it's it's hard. I mean, like it's so I wouldn't have erased Battle Network. Like if if the story here were like one gets a sequel and one series is erased from existence or something, I might have chosen differently. Um, yeah. Battle Network, I I chose to cancel it because it's kind of just done. And while I would love to see a sequel. I'm also okay with where it is. I can go back and play one, two, three, and all the bad ones after that. Um, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So I'm I'm all right with where it is currently. It's a good memory, but um, it doesn't necessarily need to come back. Whereas the other three, I would have to leave open to the possibility. And I can't actually promise a sequel for F Zero. That's got to stay in limbo because it's just e- forever going to stay in limbo. So there you go. Yeah. Um, that's, <laughs> hmm. All right, so now that we're all sad, uh, you want to do some listener mail? Listener mail. Let's, let's do. Right. Let's do like one question each. Okay, perfect. So pick um, a good one, Kevin. <laughs> well, they're they're all pretty good, but okay, sure. <laughs> uh, Sixty forty split. No, <laughs> no, I kid, I kid. Great answer. Okay, well, I mean, I gotta ask the switch light question. <laughs> I mean, by shy guy. <laughs> if the Switch Lite is very successful in terms of sales numbers, do you oh, think there will yeah. be a shift <laughs> in developers creating games with handheld only in mind? Do you think it could negatively impact the experience of playing docks? No, is my answer. I and, and I, that's a simplified answer, but no, I don't think so. Um, I think that this the general Switch is so successful already that the switch light is literally meant to be the smaller brother of it and i think it's going to stay there so mm-hmm. i don't expect that the dock gets de-emphasized in the way that like the 3d of the 3ds did um mm. i just think this is an option i don't think it's a replacement yeah mm-hmm. you know i agree if anything like if it's really really successful maybe i mean for sure that's going to diminish the chances of a switch pro that it's still dockable. So I don't know, to be honest. That was no? that's a tough one. Because uh, hmm. I feel like if it does really well, then you could just have the regular Switch that everyone likes, and then the Switch Lite that some people like, like Kevin, when you buy it. Well, you got to think, like, <laughs> the next... Yeah, the, that gray, gray, sweet... Switch. Uh, you got to think, uh, the pl- new PlayStation, new Xbox are coming soon. Um, now, I don't think that Nintendo all of a sudden is going to pop out a uh, Switch Pro to compete with them, but I do think that the Switch market will stagnate ever so slightly when that happens, and then in the next year or so, we will see some sort of hardware revision for Nintendo. I, I don't see a, a possibility where that doesn't happen, personally. Um, and I don't mm. think that that hardware revision is more towards handheld than the Switch Lite. I think right. that it is something, you know, just a just a little bit, maybe only to, yeah, you know, maybe a, a slight power increase just to help with ports from the new systems, things like that. Um, get mm. it more mm. in line with the step down. I, I don't know. I don't. I don't see the Switch Lite negatively impacting the Switch at, at all. I do see maybe. Um, you get fewer of those games that are just not optimized for handheld at all, which there are a few. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. I think maybe that that goes away because this is now oh, the, yeah. cheap, the cheap option right. and they yeah. just have to optimize that portion of it, which is great. That's fantastic. Um, but no, I don't think I don't think they overly de-emphasize the dock to any uh, real noticeable degree. Yeah, I agree with you too. I mean, it's, it's not going to have an impact i mean it's like and and for me <laughs> like it's nice to know that the switch light is an option and be able to play like just purely handheld um i i do think that uh there will be uh i, I do think there there can be more games that are just for handheld or more emphasis on handheld but in terms of dock that's not going to go away i mean we're all gonna the experience of playing with your friends 
on a big screen TV. It's always going to be there. It has to be there. It's important to have it there because I mean, it's important you know, to Nintendo that you have that. I don't see that them getting away from that completely. I really don't. Right. I mean, and we're 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 you know having that local couch co op style play and or competitive multiplayer like just right in the comfort of your home. I mean, that's that's an experience that every single gamer should be able to have. Uh, I mean, there's nothing like it. And yeah, like, there you go. Cool. Nice. All right, Sergio, pick your favorite question. I like this question by Dragon. He asks, do you prefer games with a silent protagonist, such as the ones Nintendo has shown fit to give us time and time again, especially with recent games like Fire Emblem? Or would you still rather they sh they have his, her, or their own voice? And surprising to even me, I prefer when when the characters are defined and they have their own personalities and their own voice and their own stories and backstories and desires and fears, um, emotions. Uh, you know, there's a lot of silent protagonists, like he said, in Fire Emblem. We know Link for sure, even Mario to some degree, Isaac from Dead Space. I prefer when games show me a character, a defined character. I may not like the character per se, like I don't have to, but <laughs> it's, it's like it's a different type of immersion. Like either way, there's immersion, right? When when the character is is not defined, you kind of become them in a way. That that's cool, but when the character is very defined, you you're kind of there as an as an spectator. You're kind of like part of their journey as you're playing the game. I feel like I prefer that. Honestly, I would want to see a, a well-made game, a Zelda game, where Link is given a voice and a story and, and more of a character. It would be tough to do, but I want to see it. Yeah, I, I think so, too. I have to agree. I, you know, like, I'm going back to, like, a couple characters, like, in the past, like, Squally and Heart from Final Fantasy VIII, Zidane, Tribal from Final Fantasy IX, like, you know, totally different characters, but they have their own personalities. They... <laughs> yep. They affect, they affect the group around them in a very unique way, um, or unique ways. And, I mean, <clears throat> it's nice to have a silent protagonist like Link or Mario to some degree, where you know you you pretty much control their actions and you get to see you get you get to shape them to how you want them to be uh, through their actions. But when you have, like you said, when you have like a defined protagonist, um, not only do you do you live through them, you get you get to see some of the qualities that maybe. Can shape your own, and 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 you can take some of those qualities, like Zidane. Like, he's, yes. one of the things that I love about Zidane is that he has this unconditional uh, love of being able to help people. Because, uh, as he's mentioned before, you don't need a reason to help people. Um, such a very simple, powerful statement that has you know um, that I've I've kept in my heart for for the longest of times, and still so has, and I think there having a voice like that matters and i think you know w when you have those sort of things happen with a character it it, it makes a profound impact on on our lives and, and how we play games and how we view games so i gotta say that yeah hmm. yeah so th this might actually also be kind of surprising for me i actively don't like silent protagonists um oh, wow. mm -hmm. in in games and I'll, let me explain that a little bit um first of all you guys both mentioned Link from Zelda. Link is like the least silent, silent protagonist of all time. Like, yeah, he doesn't literally talk and come out and say, well, excuse me, or anything like that. <laughs> uh, at least not in anything uh, relevant. But uh, he still has personality. Like, he does, not exactly this, but he does the equivalent of looking at the camera and shrugging when something goes funny. He is a funny character. Uh, especially in the iterations like, you know, think back to Ocarina of Time when young Link runs away from the Gorons trying to hug him. Uh, think back to Wind Waker when he's strapped to a cannon about to be shot uh, into the Forsaken Fortress and he goes through these uh, hilarious facial animations and emotions and, and fear and such. Like, Link is a very, very well-defined character who just doesn't talk, and I'm okay with that. Mm. Mm. So, to me, that's not... When I think of somebody like a, a silent protagonist, I think um, I'm thinking more like Byleth from uh, Fire Emblem Three Houses, or more like uh, the hero from from Dragon Quest. Characters that literally do not talk, like don't really show emotion, don't really 
like you're supposed to experience the world through them and, and insert yourself on this character. I don't like it uh, because what it always leads to, and Mario does this a lot too, is instead of just talking and giving that character a personality, um, which Mario has a personality, I'm not saying that, um, you get a lot of like these weird little pantomime things in these games where like other characters will be talking and then this character is just kind of like <laughs> like <laughs> gesturing with his hands and not saying anything. Mario does this a lot. Like <laughs> where he and Peach neither one can officially like say anything, so they all just make like <laughs> you know, oh wahoo you know, and that's this is <laughs> this is the world that they live in. Uh, and then they all just kind of like do this weird little pantomime act thing and then smile at the end and rub the back of their head or something. I've always thought that was awkward. I really do. And it's just like, <laughs> I don't know what we're, I, I don't know. Um, mm. <laughs> I don't even know exactly where I'm going with it, but uh, I do think that if it's done well, a silent protagonist is passable and even okay. I can, you know, I'm all right with a silent protagonist. Um, but if it's not done really well, it gets awkward in a hurry. And just overall in games, I think they're better off giving their characters some personality. You know, if you don't want them to talk, fair enough. If you don't want to give them a voice, fair enough. Do the, you know, do the Link road of at least injecting some personality in this character. You cannot look at Link's Awakening and tell me that character doesn't have its own personality. You know? Yeah. No, that's a good point. And it, I, I think... <laughs> It's a case by case basis, honestly, because when you look at sign protagonists, like I can talk about Blue from Pokemon Blue, <laughs> you know, he doesn't say a single word. Oh, All, yeah. The focus is on Pokemon, and it, I think it depends on the sh the focus of the game. You know, if the focus is not on the sign protagonist like Blue, where you know it's all about the Pokemon that you catch and 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 train and master and you know be able to fight for you. Um, I, I think that's fine, but right, like when you have like Hero or like Mario, I mean it. It it it, it does it, like you said it gets kind of pantomime and it, it it does kind of get annoying at times and you're just trying to see if maybe you can learn from that person's pers that character's personality or things like that. So um, I'm, I'm yeah. literally trying to draw out the character's personality most of the time and I don't I just get nothing. Like I'm yeah, just it's like tough, yeah yeah uh, yeah. So, so I don't know. I prefer I. Like I've thought this for a while with Fire Emblem, I would honestly prefer going away from the the my my unit type character for a little while, mm -hmm. and just like you know you can you can identify with a character but actually have it a character you yeah. know, and Three Houses did a better job with this like you you know they they have like a define you're not just like this mysterious cloaked figure in this world or something. Um, right. Fates did a pretty good job that you were actually a defined character and such, but uh, yeah, I just. I don't know. I, 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 I want uh I, I, I want to feel like this is a, a character not trying to project me into the game because I'm not in that game, you know, and I, it, that's right. hard for me to do. So I don't mm -hmm. know. That's just me. Um, OK, so one more question. Just one more thing. Cube writes, is there something you liked about a bad game, either a mechanic or story or theme or character that you would like to see return in a better game, like how a lot of the unique mechanics of Breath of the Wild started their life in Skyward Sword. Hey, that's what I was saying. Oh, man, I got one. Um, so, so a bad game, <laughs> like Final Fantasy XV, uh, I like the, the battle mechanics. Um, I liked how, you know... You, it, it it may seem complex in the very beginning, but when you get into the, the rhythm of it and being able to dodge attacks and be able to activate certain attacks on the fly, um, I, it it makes for a very fluid experience. Um, and you know, just looking at how Final Fantasy VII Remake has been doing, I think it's borrowing that sort of system to it too. So, yeah, um, because Final Fantasy XV, man, you know, when it first came out. And I'm not talking about the DLC that came after. The the story was had a terrible execution. Um, I mean, it just it didn't work well. Although the characters, I like the character development, but yeah, I think the battle system. It was just like that's what I want in RPG: real time fighting. Like you know, have a system that is is simple enough to understand, but nuanced in sort of the complexities of like 
you know, how do you change certain attacks together? But it's just enough, it's simple enough to understand and not overly overwhelming. So, yeah, I would do that. Cool, cool. You know, I'm thinking I'm going to go with Paper Mario Sticker Star. And so that's the bad game <laughs> that I'm calling the bad game. <laughs> Ooh. But I do like some parts of it, and I do hope they come back for a main actual RPG Paper Mario game because I feel like Sticker Star has like a more defined world. It has more, like more papery atmosphere, and it has more silliness to it. I think, and it also has it's like a better presented game if that makes sense. I feel like this, the, um, not the story, no, the the world is better in the music, and I mean of course definitely the graphics. It's a it's been a, a bunch of years since the the Paper Mario and the GameCube, right? <laughs> but I feel like the the presentation and the the approach to Paper Mario, like you can even have things that you can collect and use in the world for puzzles. I like that, but I definitely want them to bring all of that into the core RPG series that most Paper Mario fans like. I feel like that would be a good compromise. Even the stickers, like that could work as part of the RPG battle system. I, I want them to do that. Mm. Yeah, I I actually agree with a with a lot of that. Uh, Sticker Star <laughs> was not. It was a nice setting. Like it it was a really well designed, you know, present presented game. Yes. Um, it just had a lot of mechanical problems. So, uh, <laughs> other than that, yeah, there was a lot of goodness there for sure. Yeah. Um, and then, I mean, <laughs> we're gonna, uh, so we're gonna mention this game twice in the podcast, which I don't think you should ever do. So, you know, everybody brace yourselves for a second. Okay. I'm gonna go <laughs> with Metroid Other M. Uh, <laughs> oh. Hey, I did, I did warn you guys. Uh, I almost did too. <laughs> I'm gonna go, and I liked the points that you made about the actual story of that game, but I'm not gonna do that. Um, I thought that the game played, for the most part, I thought that the game played really well. I liked the controls and the action yeah. of the game. Um, yep. The dodge mechanics and the parry mechanics and instantly charging your your shots after rolls and such. I thought it was fluid. It felt awesome to play. And it was one of the... Um, I actually... If, <laughs> I don't talk about this much because why would I ever submit myself to that ridicule? But um, I actually kind of liked Other M. Uh, I didn't <laughs> think it was a great game, so don't get me wrong. Um, but I liked playing it because I thought it was a clever use of kind of a 2.5D with interesting combat on a 3D-styled Metroid game. Um, it had some serious issues in terms of, of the actual story execution. Um, I did not like pointing the Wii remote normally no, to I did. Like, switch to missiles and stuff. That was awkward. <laughs> I, I I like the idea, not the execution. Again, mm, mm -hmm. if that makes sense, because it didn't always work, and it was just kind of like odd sometimes. Yeah, yeah. I certainly didn't like the you know find the pixel that you're trying to find on this screen to progress oh. the story type stuff. So there's a lot of bad there, but I actually thought the core mechanics of the game. I thought it was fun to play. Um, so I would love a more. Uh, I would love to kind of work back <laughs> into a more like 3d action style um game where you really just feel like an awesome overpowered you know really cool character be that in metroid or in metroid or um one of several other series i could actually see that working fairly well with Star Fox characters for uh, a number of reasons um mm. but yeah yeah i i think I think that the game was actually solid there. So I'd love to see that kind of iterated on, but like you, I kind of don't think it'll ever be iterated on because, <laughs> oh boy. Um, but it's kind of a shame because there was some goodness there, I thought. Yeah, I mean, it could be Metroid Other M Redemption. <laughs> Dude, if they titled it that, that would make up <laughs> for it. That would be amazing. <laughs> now, if they title it... Metroid Other M, The Revenge, run away. Just run away. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's over. <laughs> Let it go. Oh, okay. So with that, I think we're going to wrap up uh, listener mail and go to our question of the week. So, Sergio, what's up, man? So, yeah, last week we asked, if Kirby ate you up, what ability would he gain? And if Kirby ended up absorbing me, he would be... Okay, going every day, sleeping between four to five hours. 
<laughs> oh, fair um, enough. If Kirby were to swallow me, uh, Kirby would be a, a a competent piano player in being able to compose and and be able to swallow other things like trees and branches. Oh, well, branches and <laughs> what parts of the ocean? <laughs> I don't know. Just swallow things to give him ideas to create more music and be able to share it to the world. Oh, and so that's I a think... power that you currently have. Cause now I'm extremely interested. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't swallow trees and branches. <laughs> so <laughs> why would your power give him the ability to do that? <laughs> well, I mean, I realize well, I'm overthinking this, but I'm really intrigued. <laughs> well, I, I, I think it's, well, this is something that, you know, I've, I've, gr- I've had for, for a long time, you know, being able to, you know, like something that I've really treasured, you know, playing piano, um, being able to compose, uh, being able to put myself out there, and and you know, like the way that Kirby swallows things, uh, one thing comes to my mind: uh, adaptation. And I think for me, uh, as especially as a musician, I think I've been able to adapt to different situations and environments where I'm able to come up with different things, different tunes, the way it sounds, how it plays, the melodies, the nuances of the way I play, um, and I think that you know Kirby can can take that sort of um, I, it it it's by by the way it's it's not like a talent it's it's just something that I've been able to build up for a long time and so I think if Kirby is able to you know swallow that sort of that ability that I've been able to develop over the years I think that Kirby would be be able to make an impact um, not only in it's a local community, but also hopefully in different parts of the world uh, mm. through through playing music, not by what he says, but what he plays. So nice, would, nice. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. fair enough. Uh, for me, I I want you to think. So when I walk, when I play a game, or when I walk in a room, or when I I look at a situation, I tend to just kind of stop and analyze what I'm looking at and move on. So it, and it, you know, before I start making decisions, I, I try to like, you know, get a good analysis of where I am, what's going on, what's most likely to happen, that kind of thing. So I'm kind of thinking that Kirby gets the scan beam from Metroid prime, like just literally <laughs> gets the scan beam and is able to scan things. I don't really know what benefit that would give him. <laughs> so I'm not sure that I would be any of those good powers, but that would be mine, I think. Ah, nice. That's a good one. Ooh. <laughs> Scam me. <laughs> cool. Uh, we do have some answers from uh, our Discord community. God, I hope so. <laughs> yeah, yes. Cube said, I think I would give Kirby the ability to copy other abilities. Wait a minute. <laughs> Whoa, that's inception. So you're essentially that little mushroom guy that's hopping on the stage that doesn't actually give any abilities? Got it. <laughs> uh, then Shy Guy gives us his goofy answer, the ability to always use more words than necessary. <laughs> oh, man. You know Which what? Which is good because Kirby is a hashtag silent protagonist. There you go. Uh, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> uh, I struggle with the same uh, thing, like using more words than needed. So that's something. <laughs> <laughs> Especially with my on off the, off the rail tangents and stuff anyway like this one right now <laughs> yeah there you go <laughs> or stuff like with that being said but i have a reason why i say it though all I'll right sergio it. keep going man. Oh, okay wait hold on oh all right fine <laughs> and then dragon also says if kirby ate me he would gain the ability of introspective awareness either that or he would become really good at mario tennis i guess <laughs> Ooh, fair enough that would be great yeah nice so, for this week's question, we ask you, if you were a Pokemon, what type would you be and why? Ooh. Oh, I like this one. Timely and topical. I like it. <laughs> so, right. definitely let us know. And with that, thanks for listening, everyone. We're going to jump out of here. But you can keep the discussion going by chatting with us on our Discord group. The description for this episode has a link to our Discord if you would like to join. We are also on Twitter and on Instagram as Nintendo Jump, and we also have a Facebook group. Please send us any feedback you have at nintendojumppodcast at gmail.com. 
The best way to support this show is through our Patreon page, which is patreon.com slash nintendojump, or by leaving a review for this show in your favorite podcast app. We would really appreciate it. This is Sergio, and on behalf of Daryl and Kevin, thank you for listening. We hope you have a great week. Bye-bye. And now, stay tuned for a special one-on-one with Daryl with Big Shot. Fired. (laughs) Fired. (laughs) Fired. Bye, everybody. Bye. (laughs) Everybody. (laughs) I was trying to figure out what to say or hum, but then I got thrown off by the... The big shot introduction. Big shot fired. So that's all I got. <laughs> Fair enough. Bye. Okay. Bye. Hello and welcome to an exciting episode of One on One with Daryl. Today I am joined by a good friend of the show and special guest, Big Shot. How you doing, man? Doing pretty well. How about yourself? I'm doing okay. Uh this is this is kind of exciting because um, you know, with our new uh, website nintendojump.blogspot.com we are actually getting reviews from our community members um big shot is one such community member who uh managed to score a review copy of little town hero and actually wrote us a, a really nice review for it. so please check that out um again that's uh nintendojump.blogspot.com um but we definitely wanted to bring you on and, and actually have a chance to talk about the game so i mean you know what were your First of all, you know, what was your overall thought? What score did you give it? Did you like it? You know, give me give me some of that. Definitely. So overall, I decided to give the game a score of 7 out of 10. And my reasoning for that score was it's very creative in the way that it looks at a genre that's kind of redundant in RPGs. Because you see so often an RPG span for 60 plus hours, you're wandering across a map with your party and you're running into the same enemy over and over and you're just kind of spamming attacks (laughs) and so what i really enjoyed about little town hero is it kind of takes all those things that you kind of expect to be in an rpg and you turn around just totally invent a whole new experience and we'll go into that a little more as we kind of carry on with this um one-on-one discussion but that's what really um caught my attention with this game and why i gave it such a positive score and there are a couple things that we'll go into that knocked off a couple points from the score that I wanted to give it. But overall, I felt really solid about a seven just because it's a really solid and innovative experience. Yeah. So, I mean, for those of you listening, a seven, we we are currently using the IGN scale, which a seven would be great. So, I mean, this is, this is what you would call a great game. That's awesome to hear. Um, Especially for kind of a a smaller uh, project. It, it's kind of interesting. It's a smaller project coming from Game Freak uh, right before Pokemon comes, uh, which is, uh, I, I guess that was a little surprising for me, the, the timing on that. Um, but it, it sounds like, it sounds cool that you actually really liked it. So, um, you know, what can you tell me about, like, you, you said it kind of flips some of the uh, standards of the genre on its head. What can you tell me, like, the, the setting, like, the, the world, you know, what are you actually doing in this game? Yeah, so the overall setting and kind of the main pull for this game is that it takes place entirely inside of this little town, hence the title Little Town Hero. And so you're following this young boy, Axe, and his group of friends and their adventures inside of this town. And so they've lived their entire life inside this town. They can't go outside the gates because there are monsters out there. So Axe and his friends are trying to desperately prove by defeating monsters, that they're able to go out outside the gates and explore and see what else the world has to offer. So this town actually isn't too crammed. I kind of expect, you know, a couple huts, a couple houses, maybe like a blacksmith or a general market, but there's actually quite a bit going on in this town. There's a farm, a a cemetery, there's housing, there's a waterfall, there's a lot going on in this little town. There's a huge castle, a watchtower. All these different things going on, and so you really don't feel crammed like I thought I would initially, and so that's something that I really appreciated about the game, but at the same time, you never felt overwhelmed about where you needed to go, you didn't have to constantly open the map, Um, so even though it is a small town, it does still offer functionality like fast travel, which was really nice, be able to get around to the different locations that you needed to go to kind of progress the story. That's the overall setting. That's cool. I mean, so... It's interesting that you have all those different uh, locations and such. Do you, like, over the course of the game, do you feel like it actually played into the fact that it has, like, a watchtower and a castle? Did you do different things at different areas of the town? Um, 
you know what what was what was actually moving around the town and interacting with the people and, and such like yeah it was really neat um each character kind of had their own different part of the map that they hung out in so you eventually befriend someone that runs the farm or someone that works in the factory and so you're constantly moving around the map to interact with those different characters there and that may be for a side quest it may be to progress the main story but you never felt like you had to stay in one place for too long and each area of the town served a specific purpose which was really nice it felt like everything in there was there for a reason and that that is nice and, and another reason that it should not feel um cramped because a lot of times when you you do kind of cram a lot of stuff in, into something it almost loses its meaning a little bit, so that's actually kind of refreshing to hear. Yeah, absolutely. It's just one of those games where you feel like everything was very deliberate, um, and that goes from the design of the town, the characters, and especially the battle system, which we can definitely go into and talk a little more about because <laughs> yeah. that's what really separates this game from every yeah. other game in the genre. Yeah, the battle system is a is a big... Um, I'll say it's a big talking point, almost a big point of contention with, with people, too. So it's... It, yeah, people really like seem to like it and get into it or really hate it. And it's, it's really funny. Um, but we'll, we'll get into that. Uh, one, one more thing about the, like the setting and, and lore and such. Um, obviously without spoilers, uh, the overall story of this game, I think you mentioned in your review, it's actually a little, a little light, but um, overall, were you like satisfied with what the story did, where it went um, just overall, or is it something that you would have liked to see a little bit more of? Yeah, it is just a little bit generic. It's a story that we've all probably heard before in video games or a book or a movie or any sort of media where there's just a young boy and he's trying to kind of expand his horizons, go out there and explore a little more. But I didn't feel dissatisfied with the story just because this is really an RPG designed for anyone to be able to complete. Um, it's not going to have you playing it for months on end or lost mm. at certain points. But just in a matter of, you know, a week or two, you can knock this game out. It's designed to be completed in about 15 to 20 hours. Oh, okay. So I felt like the story for the purpose it was trying to serve was definitely passable. And what really made it work for me was just the character design, because each of the characters had such a unique personality. Um, the writing's very witty, very comical at times. And so I think that really helped the story progress. Even though it wasn't super deep, there's not going to be a ton of plot twists or turns that kind of have you on the edge of your seat but it was definitely serviceable for what it was trying to accomplish and then i think the battle system is what really carries this game yeah so we can we can jump into the battle system so uh i'm, I'm just gonna give you the floor on this one because i feel like every time anybody talks about the battle system it is the most confusing thing can <laughs> you uh, can you give me like the explain it like i'm five version or maybe maybe explain it like i'm 10 you know give me the benefit of the doubt <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so the best way that I tried to explain this, because everyone's seen the screenshots or the trailers, they've seen the UI, and it looks awful confusing, but in the review, I tried to compare it to like a card battle type system, and looking at other people's reviews, I was relieved to see that's the comparison that everyone else kind of drew to. Right. And so the idea with this combat system is that Axe fights using ideas, which are known as izits in this game, and... The, there are three different types of izits. There are red, which are attacks. There are yellow, which are defensive. And blue, which are special effects, kind of like spells. And so the way that these function is, each izit has a power cost. So you start with a power cost of three. As the battle progresses, it gets higher. And so you can um, put into action these different ideas. And they grow more powerful as you spend more power on them. Okay. <laughs> so each idea has an attack and a defense cost or a value. So you can use these ideas to effectively break your opponent's cards. You're trying to come up with an attack that is greater than your opponent's defense. And so you're kind of left with this puzzle type situation where you're trying to figure out which ideas you can activate based on the power you have available and how you can use those activated abilities to break all of your enemy's ideas. Do you feel like that was passable enough? Uh, yeah, I just, it, this is reminding me way too much of work right now, uh, breaking my enemy's ideas. Yep. Yep. That's true. <laughs> um, so, uh, one of the, one of the common, I, I'll say, um, it, notes or complaints in certain cases was exactly how long some of the battles take took. Were you saying that they were, uh, kind of very long battle sequences? 
I felt that some definitely were. There were a couple battles where I got halfway through and I was maybe 20 minutes into the fight and I had to, you know, put my switch <laughs> wow. down and go do something. And so I had to unfortunately turn it off and kind of start over. Um, so the combat system can be very unforgiving if you aren't deliberate in your actions, if you aren't planning out ahead of time how you're going to break your enemy's attacks and how you're going to kind of string things together. Um, you could definitely be in for the long haul with a battle. And so after you experience that for the first time, I think you're a little more careful in each battle and you have to take yourself out of the RPG mindset of, oh, I can gotcha. just continually use this attack because it's really good. It breaks a lot of things. Just like start start mashing A and using everything in your power. <laughs> yeah, Yeah, absolutely. It totally breaks that mechanic of RPGs. And so you really have to be thoughtful because as you use ideas, they go away. They kind of like leave your deck of ideas per se. And so new ideas will be shuffled in for you to use, but you have to be deliberate in when you decide to use each idea because you may use it sooner than you needed to later on in the battle. You may use a really powerful spell right off the bat to kind of get a bit of a head start, but then you'll realize that you needed that at the end to finish the opponent off. Oh, no. So you have to be <laughs> very careful about the way that you kind of work through things. I wouldn't say it's worth flat out restarting if. Um, you realize that you misplayed right off the bat or even in the middle of the battle, you can keep going with it because these ideas will shuffle back into you as you take damage. But you definitely have to be careful about the way that you play them or the combat time can kind of get away from you and get out of hand. Gotcha. Uh, now, of the different, uh, there's a bunch of different uh, enemies and bosses, both the, the town, uh, other like people and actual monsters. Um, how varied did you think the different bosses were like did every battle kind of feel similar or were there some big strategy changes you know what 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 did you see on that yeah so i think that's one of the greatest strengths of this game because like in rpgs when i was playing through octopath i had traveled through um like a certain area and i would keep running into the same opponent and i kind of knew what attack they were going to use i knew how to just quickly spam my attacks like blast through them gain the xp kind of level up and go on my way but with Little Town Hero, there are no random encounters because there's not an overworld that you explore. Every encounter is story-driven. Every encounter is meaningful. And so each design of the monster is very unique. And I noticed that their attacks really played off of the character design. And so it just kind of made the character feel complete instead of them coming up with the character and then just throwing random ideas to it. Mm. They really took the time to sit down and realize, okay, this is the kind of um powerful spell or attack or defense that this specific monster would use and so i felt that each monster had their own specific attacks and spells and so i had to adjust accordingly some you had to be very defensive and wait for a weak spot to open others you just had to be total aggro try to take them down early before they get that powerful spell ready to use on you and so i think that really carries over from game freak designing pokemon characters because these sure. monsters while they are larger, they're kind of like um, oversized Pokemon. They, <laughs> which you know is a thing now. In, in yeah, norm. it's actually canon now. <laughs> so, would you yeah. say these are Dynamax or Gigantamax style Pokemon? Uh, definitely Dynamax. The okay. Gigantamax are kind of scary. Yeah, a little bit. Um, so, did you have uh, like let's let's not turn too far into spoilers, but did you have uh, like a favorite enemy or, you know, somebody that was just really cool to you at the time or were they all just kind of cool? Um, there's a really cool encounter in a graveyard and I'll kind of leave it at that for those that pick up the game and decide to play through. Oh, nice. That um, encounter is a little challenging. It took me a couple of attempts to get through, but I felt like the design was really solid and the attacks and effects that it had were very convincing as well. Nice. Yeah. You, I mean, you mentioned the, the different enemies feeling different and um, really a couple RPGs do come to mind. The, one of the other ones actually would be Octopath, uh, but not the main like enemy characters, the, the random battles. The bosses all had different strategies and such, and that was something I really appreciated about that game. Um, the, the really great RPGs are the ones that you, you actually kind of need to think <laughs> about how to uh, approach. And this sounds like, like 100% that, which is pretty cool to see it definitely is at face value it's certainly an rpg it's got all those mechanics even though it doesn't have the traditional um leveling up it's got no leveling system for the players um it doesn't have any shopping you don't have to constantly 
grind for gold and then go buy 99 health potions at the store. But but that's my favorite part of RPGs. Come on, man. Oh, well, you're out of luck on this one. Oh, no. But <laughs> I think all that aside, it's still definitely an RPG. It's still got all those elements. It's got a skill tree and everything. But it's more of a puzzler at heart. And I think that's what I was trying to really get at with my review because so many people reviewed it negatively. And I think it's because they wanted that traditional RPG experience out of Game Freak. And instead they got a game with RPG elements that really functions more as a puzzler because like we have been discussing, you can't just spam attacks to get out of encounters, but you really have to be methodical. You have to almost break out your calculator and do some math to figure out, okay, with these combined attacks, can I take down this powerful spell and just knock that out and not have to deal with it? And so I really kind of had to sit back and look at it from that puzzle perspective. Hmm. That's that's interesting. And yeah, I saw a bunch of people almost going into this expecting Pokemon, which uh, to me was kind of insane because Game Freak actually has done other games. I mean, uh, between like Harmonite and uh, Pocket Card Jockey and a few others, I mean, they, they get outside that mold fairly, you know, every once in a while at least. So I think this was just a different um, almost goal in, in game design, and I think they wanted to separate it. Um, but, I mean, Elephant in the Room, you know, what this is developed by the developer who makes Pokemon games. How, how would you say it's, you know, what are some of the things it's taking from Pokemon that you would consider positives? Um, and what are some of the things that, you know, it's very clearly trying not to be? Yeah, that's a great question, and I think that's something that was really looming in reviewers' minds as they received their review codes and they started downloading this game, just how much of the Pokemon experience am I going to receive in this game? And <laughs> I felt like it was totally different from the Pokemon experience, which was great because it should be its own thing. We've got Sword and Shield coming later this year. That's great. We can experience it then. But it was really nice to delve into a different experience. And so there were a lot of similarities. You start with your main character, Axe, awful, awful close to Ash. He lives with his mom in a small town. He's got a close group of friends. He's got a rival that constantly wants to challenge him, kind of breaks up parts <laughs> nice. of the story where it's like, hey, like, let's just fight. He comes out of nowhere and he's like, hey, let's fight. Like, let's go right now. <laughs> and so it just really reminded me of, you know, growing up playing Pokemon and your rival would just ride into town and challenge you. So it's really almost like they're of... making fun of themselves a little bit, which I, I can appreciate. That's true. That's a good point. It's something I hadn't really considered. Um yeah, that's a great observation, but I think those are some of the main um, similarities between Pokemon and Little Town Hero, and obviously that isn't much. So that's really speaking to just how original this IP is, which is great. Um, similar feels, I kind of already talked about the monster design. It's kind of hard to get away from that, just because any sort of like animated monster from Game Freak it could be passable for like a Pokemon. Mm -hmm. Um but yeah, all those similarities and then the differences really just comes from the unique battle system and more side quests, kind of the RPG elements that come in with like skill trees, side quests, um, different things like that that really set them apart from the main franchise of Pokemon. Yeah, gotcha. Um, so, I mean, I think. I think that's probably about as well as we're going to do on the battle system, um, unfortunately, by text. Uh, the best I can say is, you know, play it, try it, <laughs> or watch videos, and, and maybe you'll understand. Um, it is yep. cool looking. I've, I've watched some videos on the strategies and such, and it looks it looks interesting for sure. Um, I can definitely see what you're saying. Yeah, there's a lot to it. I'm just going to end on this. Um, there are different parts besides just the combat that we had explained with activating ideas and using them in battle. Sure. Kind of like paying a mana cost and then using a card in the card battle system. Because um, there's also like a board that you would move around kind of like Mario Mario party style. Oh, right. Yeah. We almost after, missed that. <laughs> after each turn, you generate a number one through four and you decide how you're going to move around the map. And so different spots, um, you could land on a support space where one of your um, town mates will assist you. And each one has a special ability. They may heal you. They may attack the monster they may provide you with a new idea for combat or point out a weakness for the monster yeah so there are a lot of different layers in combat but what i love about the game is it doesn't just have you drink from the fire hose right off the bat a lot of these things aren't even available at the start of the game but they've kind of got you on a drip line where they each combat they introduce a new idea or a new mechanic in battle 
and they make it very deliberate, and the mechanic that they introduce really turns that battle for you, and so it almost acts as a tutorial for the first three or four combats where they're just introducing these new ideas to you. Um, so it just kind of blends in and you kind of pick it up bit by bit instead of all at once. So in that way, it's not super overwhelming. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Um, so obviously from the outset, uh, we know, a we knew a couple things about the game. One, it looks phenomenal. <laughs> the, uh, I'm re really happy with the art style. And two, the music was composed by Toby Fox, who was responsible for uh, the game and music of, of Undertale. Um, how would you call, you know, what would you say about the presentation of the game? Did it meet what you were hoping for? Did it exceed it? Or, or you know, how, what were your feelings? I think it's really strong. It definitely meets my expectations. I still remember back, I don't even know how long ago, this game was announced just under Town before we knew that it was going to be called Little Town Hero. And I just remember seeing the art style, seeing that first monster encounter, and just thinking, wow, what an incredible art style. I can't wait to play this game. And that really carried throughout the game. I never really got over just how beautiful the game was, especially in handheld mode. It still looks great docked, but I just preferred to play this game handheld. It was just a more intimate experience. So uh, Kevin really needs to download it on his Switch Lite because I think that's the perfect <laughs> way to play it. Yes, perfect. Okay. Um, and then finally, I mean, so you've been you've been really positive on it here. Um, <clears throat> how do I, how do I want to phrase this? Let me. Uh, are there some things you were looking for in the game that it didn't uh, give you some things you think it could have done better, maybe that you'd be looking for in like a little town hero two or, or something, you know, what are some negatives is kind of what I'm saying. Yeah. So I guess I'm kind of looking at the battle system and drawing the parallel to like a card battle system. You can't decide which ideas to take in or out of like your effectively deck oh, where gotcha. these ideas are shuffled to you. Um, you keep the same ideas throughout the game, and I kind of wish that <laughs> as you were going through different side quests or meeting characters, like they can give you ideas as you're going into battle, but I kind of wish um, I helped someone and they provided me with an idea like in a side quest, and I was able to add that to my deck. Or maybe we do add like an idea shop, and I'm able to go maybe to like a university or school and learn some sort of new idea to integrate into my deck, or maybe I hate a card and I want to remove it because I'm trying to strategize how to best take down um, the enemy that I'm facing. I saw from a lot of different interviews that one of the main points that people didn't enjoy about the game, and it's a valid point, is all the RNG, because these ideas are randomly kind of shuffled out to you during your turn, and there's the whole board mechanic at the end of each turn, where you just kind of feel, despite your best planning and efforts to coordinate an attack, um, it's still kind of left to chance. And so I think that's something that I'd really like to see tightened up if this game were to get a sequel. Just put a little more power in the player's hands and allow them to customize the ideas that they go into battle with. Yeah, that makes <laughs> that makes a lot of sense, actually. Um, it, it almost, almost too much sense, huh? <laughs> Anyways, um, so, I mean, I guess, you know, final words for now... Uh, Ultimately, this game is currently out on the eShop for twenty four ninety nine, if I'm remembering right. Um, at that price, uh, who would you recommend it to, and you know how strongly would you recommend it? Yeah, so I recommend it to anyone that enjoys a puzzling experience, um, someone that enjoys RPGs but has noticed that they have a hard time completing them, and just anyone looking for something that they haven't experienced before. I think it's so easy to constantly purchase and download games and have them be an awful similar experience i promise you that you haven't played a game like little town hero before so if you take the chance and you download it and you play it i don't think you'll be disappointed in the uniqueness of the gameplay so i definitely recommend it i gave it a 7 out of 10 which we said earlier good game um it definitely has its flaws its drawbacks those are kind of highlighted in other people's reviews i kind of focused on the positives and trying to explain the battle system I know we weren't able to go super in depth in that in this interview, so hopefully you can go read the written review on yeah, the blog. Yeah, please, please go Just check try to it understand out. Understand a little more, check out the screenshots because it can be a little convoluted. So I think that's the best way to kind of understand it is just read through that review once or twice. But definitely a solid game, recommended to those types of players, and uh, yeah, definitely go check it out. It's out right now. Awesome. Well, I mean, <clears throat> big shot. Thank you for uh, coming on and telling us all of that. Uh, definitely looking. 
forward to uh, at least hearing more opinions on it, uh, especially as it gets in the hands of players. I, I feel like that generally um, kind of better uh, gives the message when it actually gets in the hands of people. Sometimes um, games get a little crazy reviewed here and there. So uh, I'm, I'm glad to hear that you enjoyed it. That's that's awesome. Um, before I let you go, uh, did you have any other comments, words for um, Kevin or Sergio who could not join us tonight or or me <laughs> oh man i just wanted to uh reach out and say that despite sergio's opinions kingdom hearts is one of the greatest video game franchises of all time and animal crossing is half the game that kingdom hearts is and i'm just gonna leave it at that <laughs> oh, oh my god <laughs> okay fair fair enough sergio please don't cut this out oh man i just wanted to uh reach out and say that Animal Crossing is one of the greatest video game franchises of all time, and Kingdom Hearts is half the game that Little Town Hero is, and I'm just going to leave it at that. And, you know, finally, I think you probably thought you got off the hook on this. You didn't. Uh, you are now on the spot. What is your favorite Switch game, Mr. Big Shot? Oh, man. Drop it on me right at the end. Oh, yeah. I was expecting this interview to start with that question, so uh, oh yeah, kind of caught me by surprise. It wouldn't be on the spot otherwise. And the the question is my favorite game, not the best game, right? Yeah, your favorite. Okay, so I have to go with Smash just because whenever I have half an hour of free time and I try to consider um, which game on Switch to play, that's definitely the go-to. It's just so easy to pick up and play. The amount of fighters is just incredible this time around. So definitely going with Smash, but I will say that Fire Emblem Three Houses could make a serious case for my favorite Switch game. I'm only about 15 to 20 hours in my first playthrough with the Blue Lions. But okay. yeah, I think it can make a serious run. I'm really enjoying it. But right now, I definitely have to go with Smash just because of the multiplayer aspect. Absolutely. Both awesome choices. All right. Um, I think that's probably going to do it. Uh, Big Shot, thank you again for coming on. Uh, and, you know, we will definitely catch you in the community. Everybody else, please go check out his review. Uh, again, once more, that's nintendojump.blogspot.com. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me.